Welcome to episode four of Creole Parametric for SolidWorks users. And this is part two of sketching. In the previous video, I sketched in a model that already had geometry. In this video, I'm going to start out with no existing geometry. And like I mentioned in last video, the way I recommend that you get into sketch mode is by selecting the flat planar surface or datum plane that you want to sketch on and then using the sketch tool, which is also the keyboard shortcut of the letter S. I'll click on it and now I am in sketch mode. Again, sketch is a mode. It does become a tab when you go into the sketching environment, but when you are in regular part mode, you do not have a sketch tab. And if I want to look right at my sketch plane, I will click on the sketch view command and that reorients my model. I'm going to unclutter my screen by turning off the display of the datum planes. And you can see that we have these blue dashed lines, which are our sketch references. When I create any geometry, well, it'll be dimensioned to the sketch references, and I can also lock my geometry into the sketch references. If you want to see what they are, you can hold down the right mouse button and click references, and that'll open up the dialog box. Let me close it. And now for my geometry, well, let's create a rectangle. I'm just going to lock it into the intersection of my references. Let's drag it out about so big. And at this point, I could create other additional rectangles. If I hit the middle mouse button, well, it gets me out of rectangle creation mode. And you can see the geometry we've created. Let me left click on the background of the screen to deselect. You can see with this center rectangle, I automatically get what are called weak dimensions in here, which are just suggestions of a dimensioning scheme by Creoparametric. It automatically provides you with the minimum geometry, or excuse me, the minimum dimensioning scheme that you need. Let me create some other geometry. You can also access the sketch tools from the right mouse button menu. I'm going to create some circles in here, and let me create a circle locking in here, and I'll make it about yay big. I'll create another circle. And one thing that you'll notice is that as I move it out, at one point it's going to snap to being the same radius or same diameter as the other circle that exists in the model. You can see that there is a little equal sign inside of a blue circle. That is called a constraint. And as you're sketching, Creo Parametric is suggesting these different constraints to you. In SOLIDWORKS, constraints are called relations. And in Creo Parametric, well, a relation is like an equation in SOLIDWORKS. So you'll find that there's just different terminology for different things. But for stuff I want to show later, I'm going to make this a different size than the original circle. Let's do that over here as well. Create another circle down there and create another circle over here. Again, just making them unique sizes. Let me hit the middle mouse button. You can see now we have even more weak dimensions on the computer screen. Uh, actually, I want to create a couple more circles for something that I want to show. Before I create those other circles, though, I'm going to create a center line. And I want to point out that there are actually two different center line commands in the ribbon. Here we have a regular sketching center line. This is a center line that would only exist in the sketch. If I go to the drop down list over here, there's another kind of center line which is tangent to two entities. But another difference about center lines compared to SOLIDWORKS is that in Creole Parametric, center lines are infinite. Now there's another center line command, but it is in the datum group. And using a center line from the datum group will actually create a datum feature in your model. You can also use these center lines as the axis of revolution. So let's click on the center line command. And I'm going to make a vertical one right on top of my sketch references. One thing to note is that sketch references are not center lines. There's actually a difference between the two. And when I left click on the background to deselect everything, you'll notice that the center line is in a different color. Let me go and create another center line. I'm going to make this horizontal and then middle mouse button to get out of it. 
it's still selected. If I hold down the right mouse button, I can designate this as the axis of revolution. When you create a center line, it's automatically designated as the axis of revolution. If you create other additional center lines, you could change this to being the axis of revolution if I were to revolve this geometry later on. But anyhow, let's see. Just notice I have another weak dimension in here. I'm not sure what that's being dimensioned to, but I'll take care of it later. And now that I have some center lines in here, let's create a couple more circles. And I'm just creating the circle so I can show you another constraint later on. And you know what? I'll let these snap to being equal diameters. So now I have a whole bunch of weak dimensions on the computer screen. Now I'm going to add the different constraints. And how you add constraints in Creole Parametric is a little different than the way that you add relations inside of SOLIDWORKS. And so in this particular situation, I'm going to start off by using the command first. You can either select the command first and then choose the geometry it applies to, or you could go the other way around. So for example, let's go to the equal command now. And I'll say that I want this to be equal to that. And that is good. Let's also now I'm going to middle mouse button to get out of here. And now I'm going to select a couple other circles. Let me hold this one and then control and select this and control and select this. Now I can use the mini toolbar. And from the mini toolbar, I can make all of these equal. And I prefer adding the constraints before changing the different dimensions, just to make sure that I have the dimensioning scheme that I want. So that's good for the equals constraint. You can see that we have other ones in here like vertical, horizontal, perpendicular, tangent, midpoint, coincident, and parallel. These are pretty much the same that you have in SOLIDWORKS. Hey, Sketching is pretty much sketching everywhere. I'm going to show you the symmetric constraint. The symmetric constraint is also a little bit different in Creole Parametric. I want you to refer to the lower left-hand corner of the screen, the message area, and it's prompting me that for using the symmetric constraint, you're going to select a straight reference and two vertices or points to make them symmetric. And so I can select, say, my center line, and then this vertex, and then this vertex over here. And now those are symmetric about the center line. And so, again, just a little bit of a difference compared to SOLIDWORKS, where you could pick a center line and two lines. And also, like I mentioned before, center lines are automatically infinite. Okay, so that is good. Before I go into dimensions, I want to point out a, another tool which is called Delete Segment, and this allows you to trim entities. A lot of us old timers call this squiggle trim because you can, oops, let me select the command first. Uh, as I squiggle my mouse over the model, I am deleting different entities, and this allows me to create a sketch that doesn't have overlapping entities in the model. Let me see if I can get a few other ones that I want to get rid of. And so that's good. I actually got a little more than I wanted to. I wanted to keep that circle in here. But one thing I want to point out is that you do not have to have a sketch that is limited to closed loops. Let me hit the undo button. I'm not going to eliminate the overlapping or the intersecting entities. So I can show you how I can still use that for creating features like extrudes and revolves. Okay, so now I've got a whole bunch of different weak dimensions on my computer screen. I see that some of my dimensions that are being suggested to me are being dimensioned to entities that I actually don't want for controlling this. So let's create the dimensions that we want. There is a dimension command here in the ribbon. There are a few other different dimension types in here, and you can also explain what different dimensions are being referenced to. You don't have the big drop-down list like you have in SOLIDWORKS. It's sort of like you just have the smart dimension command, and what you pick determines what kind of dimension that you get. 
but still you can change the kind of dimension that you have. I have a whole video on all of the different dimensioning techniques, but let's take a look at a few different dimensions. Let me hit the dimension command, and let's say I want to control, say, the length of this line. I'll just pick the line with the left mouse button, and then use the middle mouse button to locate where I want the dimension to be, and then I can punch in a value that I want. Let's use value of 300. All right, that is good for that. Then let's see another dimension. Well, in this case, maybe I want the distance of this center line to my sketch reference. Well, let's left click and then left click and then middle mouse button. I accidentally used the scroll wheel there to roll it out a little bit. Let's type in a value there for 400 and starting to look pretty good. Now let's see, maybe I want the dimension from here to here, so I will left click those two things. And where you middle mouse click can determine what kind of dimension that you get. Here I want the horizontal dimension, let me create that one. And let's see another dimension. Let's create one for the length of this line and then middle mouse button and type in a value. And so what I'm doing is I'm adding enough dimensions so I no longer have any weak dimensions on the computer screen. So for example, by adding this length dimension, well, that weak dimension for an angle going to the center line, that went away. And I've got two last weak dimensions that I want to take care of. And I'm going to hit the middle mouse button to get out of dimension creation mode. I just want to show you that when you pick a dimension with the left mouse button, you get a mini toolbar. I know a bunch of these icons might not be intuitively obvious, but I just want to point out that if you hover over the different icons, you'll get the tool tip. The first time that these come up, you probably want to take a moment to familiarize yourself with what they mean. But I want to point out that from the mini toolbar, here we're getting suggested a diameter dimension, but I can change it to a radius dimension. I can also change it to a linear dimension. So let's say that I change this to a radius dimension. Let's plug in a value of 50 because I had the equal constraint, all the other circles changed as well. Let me deselect and then I realize, oh wait, nope, I actually want a diameter dimension. Let me click on it. And now in the mini toolbar, I have the command to toggle this to a diameter dimension. And last one that we have over here, we have a weak dimension. And this is pretty good, except I want it to have a different value. So I can double click on the dimension to plug in a new value to use. So that's good for that one. Uh, so again, double click on dimensions to change the value. One last command for changing dimensional values. I just want to point out that you can select multiple dimensions. And one way to do that is to swipe a box over the different dimensions. And here we have a modify command for those different dimensions. And this will open up a dialog box that will list all the different dimensions. And there's some neat stuff you can do from here. So for example, you have a roller wheel if you want to see how the values change dynamically as you spin them around. But another interesting tool here is to lock the scale. So let's say that I wanted to make a big change to these dimensional values. Well, I can just lock the scale. And let's say I want this 400 value to be a value of 20 and hit the enter key. And let me click the OK button and then just rescale everything in here. Some of my dimensions are pretty far away, but let me just drag them a little bit closer, a little bit closer, a little bit closer. And then I can zoom in here so I can take a look at my sketch. Come here, dimension. There we go. Okay, so there you see the dimensions in my sketch. Let me move a few of these closer to one to get one another. So again, uh, it's just a matter of double clicking on a dimension or you can use the modify command for making big changes to dimensional values. There we go. Now I can zoom into everything in here. So now my sketch is complete. To get out of sketch mode, you can use the check mark from the ribbon, but to reduce mouse travel, all you have to do is hold down the right mouse button and then you can get to the check mark right from there and let me find wherever my sketch is. So there I have my sketch 
And right now, if I try to extrude this sketch, it's not going to work. If I try clicking on it, I'm not getting a preview because I do have these overlapping and intersecting entities. One thing that got added, oh, about four years ago, if you go to the selection filter in the lower right-hand corner, you can change selection from geometry to sketch region. And so that allows me to select individual portions of my sketch. I'll hold down the control key to grab two of them. And here in the mini toolbar, I've got the extrude command. So this allows me to extrude just portions of a sketch that has multiple overlapping regions. I'm going to cancel out for a moment to show you that you can also just drag a box over all the different sketch regions. I'll use the right mouse button to get to my mini toolbar, and that way I can extrude everything. So just take advantage of those different sketch regions if you don't want to make sure that you just have one single loop in your sketch that you want to extrude or revolve. Let me show you the model tree. If I go down here and expand the little junction box for the extrude, here you can see that there is a copy of the sketch inside of the extrude feature. My sketch feature is still here in the model. Let me rotate so I can get to it. Oh, and for one other thing that I want to show you about sketches and the model tree, instead of using sketch regions, I'm going to create a, another sketch. Let me use the sketch command. Here I can choose use previous to use the same sketch plane as before. Here is the project command. I'd mentioned that the project command is like convert entities. I'm going to use the loop option just so I can grab this entire surface. Let's hit close out of there and then use the check mark. So here I have sketch two that's created. Let me turn on my axis display. Just want to be able to get to this axis of revolution. So with the sketch selected, I can choose to do a revolve. And for my axis of revolution, let me select this axis. You can see a preview of the revolve that would end up being created. Let me change how this is going to be made. Let me change it and let it snap into 90 degrees. So in this particular situation, because I created a sketch and then performed an operation to that sketch, like revolving it, the original sketch is automatically hidden, and here we have the same exact sketch embedded within the feature. You do have the ability to go to your settings and then tree filters, and if you don't want to see used sketches in your tree, you can uncheck the box, and then when I click the apply button, you'll notice that one of the sketches is no longer visible. And if you don't want to see sketches at all, well, you can uncheck that box and hit the apply, and so now we're not seeing the original sketch in the tree as well. But let's bring those two back. Let's click the OK button. So again, just be aware that it's a little different than SOLIDWORKS. In SOLIDWORKS, your sketches end up being consumed and they'll appear underneath the junction box for a feature that uses it. And if I went to delete a feature, like if I went to delete this Revolve, I'll use the right mouse button. Here it just shows me that the highlighted features will be deleted. This dialog box is a lot different than the dialog box that you have in SOLIDWORKS where it asks you if you want to delete the children as well. But let's cancel out of there and let me turn off my axis display. So there you have it. Just a little bit more about sketching in Creo Parametric. And again, if you know how to sketch in SOLIDWORKS, it's not that much of an adjustment.